Yeah, good morning. Thank you so much for your interest. And uh, uh, for us as EPP group, the largest political family in the European Parliament, it's great to be in split. We are discussing uh, yesterday and today uh, the ideas for the next upcoming nine months. That is a preparatory uh, phase towards uh, the European elections next year. Uh, our continent will decide about the future and we as the biggest party in Europe we want to uh, offer to the citizens a convincing approach for how to manage uh, the next years in front of us. To create uh, safety, to create uh, also protecting Europe uh, for their daily life. Um, and that's why we care first of all about the very concrete issues on the table. For example, inflation, uh, living costs, housing is close to our citizens. We try also on European level to assist the national level together to solve these uh, questions. We have as a second top priority the migration debate on our desk where we must reduce the numbers. The numbers are too high and uh, the state must decide who is coming and not the smugglers are deciding. Uh, and to combine this also with a humanitarian approach that we are committed to also help our Ukrainian friends, those who are as refugees here in Europe, so to find a good balance on this. And the third point is for us the future perspective for Europe. The European People's Party, we are the Christian Democrats, we are the founding party of uh, today's European Union. Adenauer, de Gasperi, Schumann made today's Europe possible. And uh, our idea is now to offer also for the next years a convincing plan how to strengthen uh, the today's European Union, to continue our path. And for all these debates, it's great to be in Croatia, because Croatia is a perfect country for discussing these issues. I want to thank Andrei uh, Blenkovic, the Prime Minister of Croatia, for his clear commitment, for his leadership. Croatia is a place where we can see that we can convince people in favor of a pro-European approach, with the Schengen enlargement, with the Euro, uh, joining the Eurozone approach, uh, that you can win the support of citizens for doing so. And this spirit of Croatia, this spirit of HDZ here in Croatia is a motivation for us on European level. And uh, it shows also that partnership, national strong politicians and European embedded uh, uh, approach, um, especially having Andrei Plenković as, uh, as Prime Minister in mind, that he is uh, well connected, knows a lot of friends on European level, that is benefiting the Croatia and also Europe is benefiting out of this. That's why. It's great to be in Croatia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Manfred. Uh, again, welcome, but this time welcome also to Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, and really an honor for HDZ to be the host of the final study days of the EPP group uh, before the next uh, European elections in June 2024. This has been indeed uh, almost a month of the constant EPP activity in Croatia. Last weekend in Zagreb we had the Youth EPP Council. Now the study day is here with the highest uh, leaders of the EU institutions and in a few weeks our friends from the EPP from the Committee of the Regions will be also gathering in Croatia. That is a signal of respect of our party friends across Europe and also an opportunity to discuss our achievements to discuss the current context and most of all to see what are the solutions for Europe in the future. Uh, as Manfred has outlined, there are several key important political points and principles that we stand for. As the founding party of the European project, it is of course important that our main values, and that is the values of the Christian Democratic parties, people's parties, uh, also part of the liberal thought, but also the heritage of the Judeo-Christian civilization are put in place also in the policies before the elections of next year. There are some uh, main concerns at the agenda of all of the European countries today. The first one, of course, the security. Security stemming from multiple crises. One, our way of life that was uh, impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic for almost two years intensively, then the impact of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, and then the third threat, and that is the threat of the illegal migrations. And that puts the issues of security in the focus, and the policies that we are discussing here should, in our view, 
be the main line of the policies of Europe as a whole uh, in the next five years period. The other issue is competitiveness of European economy. Given the big global changes and the impact on the economies and finances of all of these crises, we need to strengthen uh, the joint solidarity in the times of crisis. I think we have managed excellently, and my praise goes to Ursula and the initiatives that the Commission has taken. I have many times said that COVID was a big problem, but the European Union came up with a big answer through the EU Next Generation and in Croatia, having at our disposal more than 10 billion euros above the usual uh, multi-annual financial framework funds, gives us a chance to boost our economy to uh, set good targets on the critical infrastructural investments, but also to help us in uh, keeping the social cohesion, something that was a top priority for my government, because I always said we will remain united and supportive to Ukraine as long as we manage to avoid the social fracture and keep the social peace in our own countries, and this is what we have attained so far. The third point I'd like to make is a little bit looking ahead in terms of the perspective of the countries that are in our neighborhood in the enlargement process for us as a neighboring country to Southeast Europe. We have a lot of expertise, a lot of knowledge about the trends in our neighborhood. We are now expecting the new Commission's report on the progress and we also think that uh, all of our neighbors should um, actually accelerate their reform process in order to be more ready to enter the next stages of the EU's accession process. This goes also for the efforts being done by Ukraine and Moldova in particular. And of course, I think that uh, a final point is how the EPP, as the sober mainstream party, should find answers for fighting demagogues, I wouldn't even call them the populists, but demagogues across the political spectrum. We all have them, whether they're in Croatia or in other European countries, with arguments. They're always using every single potential, not even a crisis, but let's say it's a topic to attack the governments from the angle that they believe is useful for them, but at the same time never ever offering any solution to any real problem that the citizens or the economy is needing. And that's why the campaigns are the moment when everybody should come clearly up front and stand for the values and actions that will be taken in the future. I will always remember this combined mandate of the European Parliament where Manfred and the whole group gave us a big support and of course commission led by Ursula as the days when Croatia joined Schengen area, when Croatia joined Eurozone, when we entered the European stability mechanism, when we agreed due to the objective circumstances to extend the deadline of the use of the EU Solidarity Fund and thank you Ursula for, for understanding and of course having positioned ourselves now as 10 years member of the European Union as a reliable and a solid partner and all of that is always easier and more efficient being a member of the European People's Party. Thank you for coming to Split. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, dear Manfred, dear André. Uh, indeed, I will also always remember the 1st of January of this year where I had the honor and the pleasure to be in Zagreb and to celebrate with you the integration in Schengen and the Euro, and it was um, amazing and heartwarming to see the pride of this country to join Schengen and uh, the Eurozone. And therefore, I mean, Croatia is a European success story, and it's your leadership that brought Croatia exactly to that point. And Manfred, I also want to thank you. For the last four years, we have together navigated through manifold crises, it started indeed with a global pandemic, an economic crisis, and then the brutal war that Russia unleashed against Ukraine. At the same time, we have together agreed and worked through one of the most ambitious legislative agendas of the European Union since its beginning. So many thanks for your leadership and your clear guidance on, and orientation uh, and the good work we've done together. In nine months now, um, there will be European elections, so the study days are very good to take stock, but also to look forward, to, to take the opportunity to reflect on what we've done in the last four years, but also to set the priorities for the future. Russia's war against Ukraine has proven that there is a strong need for Europe to adapt 
to a more dangerous and volatile geostrategic and geopolitical environment. We have stepped up our efforts towards the defense union and strengthened our ties with trusted global partners, but also with NATO allies. All of this while supporting Ukraine financially and with military support and humanitarian aid in a sum of by now 81 billion euros. We've seen Russia's strong blackmail on energy that uh, strained our energy system, but thanks to a very determined and united answer, we've gotten largely rid of our dependency of Russian fossil fuels. Energy prices that were skyrocketing last year in summer have come back to pre-war levels, but we know that they remain structurally high. So this is one of the topics we will discuss uh, when we look at competitiveness in the global, in the international scene. A key solution to that is to engage and uh, to improve the clean technologies because this increases our independence. It is good pay, uh, paying jobs here. It's homegrown energy. It reinforces our competitiveness and strengthens our sovereignty. Another challenge we must face is irregular migration. The latest events in Lampedusa show the need to fix our asylum and uh, migration system. And thanks also to EPP, we have made good progress, and I thank you for that, Manfred, and your leadership, in adopting proposals that are core to the pact of migration and asylum. I strongly urge now the member states to find agreement on the crisis regulation in the meeting of the Ministers for Home Affairs today. We must now finish the job. We must ensure proper implementation of the Migration and Asylum Pact then in the European Union. We need these common rules. And let me stress this. Our citizens, rightly so, expect that it is Europe that will decide who comes to us and under what circumstances and not the traffickers and smugglers. As EPP, we know organized crime, and these are the traffickers and smugglers, must be fought. Finally, enlargement is indeed, we all three mentioned it's a topic that is very close to our heart. The past enlargement has been a great success for countries such as Croatia and a great benefit for the European Union. So we must replicate this with the current candidate countries. Of course, it's a merits-based process, um, but this requires simultaneously structural reforms in the candidate countries and a parallel track of reform on the side of the European Union. It is very important that we explain to our member states and to our citizens that in the new geostrategic environment, an enlargement merits-based is strengthening us and is necessary and beneficial for us. So this is a view on the discussions we will have today. Many thanks again for the invitation. It's good to be back in Croatia, and it's good to be together here with our EPP. Thank you.